Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into codependency. Ooh, that's a good one. It is a good one. It really huh. is. And it's a topic that came up uh, from one of our listeners who sent in a conversation that she had with uh, someone who's acting as a counselor. Okay. So we thought it'd be interesting to kind of dissect this conversation and see what we could learn from it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and what makes it even more interesting is that it touches on things like technology and how much we rely on it, how we deal with different preferences and relationships, and even some cool observations about cultural differences, especially from Japan. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a pretty packed conversation. It is. It is. So to set the scene a little bit, one of the people in this conversation just got back from living in Japan. Ooh. And is now spending time with her mom in France. Yeah. So you've got this interesting kind of cultural blend going on there. The other person is acting like a counselor, kind of guiding the conversation, offering some really insightful observations and pushing the first speaker to really examine their own thoughts and behavior. So it's yeah. like we're getting a behind the scenes look at how these dynamics play out in a real relationship. I like that behind the scenes. Yeah. I feel like we're going to get some real nuggets of wisdom from this one. For sure. For sure. So are you ready to jump in? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, let's go. So the conversation kicks off with this story about the speaker's mom feeling anxious while they're out hiking. Oh, I can relate to that sometimes. Right. Especially when you're in a new place. Exactly. And she's worried about getting lost because she doesn't have her smartphone. Yeah, makes sense. And this immediately got me thinking about our own relationship with technology. You know, have you ever felt that kind of anxiety when you're without your phone? Oh, yeah, all the time. I feel like I'm so attached to it. Right. It's like we've become so dependent on it for everything from navigation to communication to entertainment. It's true. It's like an extension of ourselves at this point. Exactly. But here's the interesting part. The speaker in this conversation who, you know, just came from super tech savvy Japan actually has a completely different experience. Yeah. They've been traveling through France without a data plan and they're surprised by how freeing it feels. Wow. That's interesting. So it's like they're kind of forced to disconnect and they're actually enjoying it. Exactly. They're rediscovering the simple joys of being present in the moment without constantly checking their phone or relying on GPS. I wonder if that has something to do with their time in Japan. I mean, from what I know, Japan is like super high tech, right? Oh, absolutely. But I think what this contrast shows is that it's not just about the technology itself. It's about our choices and the culture we're immersed in. That's a good point. You know, we can choose to engage with technology in a way that enhances our lives or we can let it consume us. Right. And that's what makes this conversation so thought provoking. It's not just about codependency. It's about how technology plays a role in our relationships and how our cultural experiences shape our perspectives. It's like all these things are interconnected. Exactly. And that brings us to the heart of the matter. The speaker reveals that they struggle with codependency, especially with their mom. Oh, wow. So that's where the codependency comes in. Yeah. And they admit to relying on her for validation and shared excitement in a way that feels kind of out of balance. Okay. So how does this codependency actually manifest in their relationship with their mom? Well, they give some specific examples like choosing restaurants or shopping for clothes. Situations where their enjoyment seems to completely hinge on whether their mom is equally enthusiastic. Oh, I see. So it's like they need their mom's approval to fully enjoy something. Exactly. And they even talk about how this tendency was amplified during their time in Japan, where group harmony and shared experiences are super important. Ah, uh, that makes sense. I mean, in a culture that emphasizes collective enjoyment, it makes sense that someone might become more attuned to others' reactions and seek validation from them. Right. And this is where the counselor really digs deep. They point out that the speaker doesn't seem as concerned with codependency in their friendships. So why would that be? Hmm. That's a good question. Maybe because friendships are generally more balanced. You know, there's more of a give and take. Yeah. And maybe because friends are more likely to share similar interests from the get-go. Right. It's like you choose your friends based on shared values and interests, but you don't get to choose your family. Exactly. And with family, there can be these unspoken expectations and roles that can sometimes create an imbalance in the dynamic. Okay, so let's go back to this difference between the speaker's relationship with their mom and their friendships. What are some of the key differences that the counselor points out? Well, the counselor observes that the speaker's mom doesn't seem to seek the speaker's approval in the same way that the speaker seeks hers. Hmm, I see. So it's like there's an asymmetry in their need for validation. Exactly. And that can definitely contribute 